This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. I will now call this meeting to order. I will also ask uh, Dr. McGowan to hand out our first set of Brighton Believer Awards for this calendar year, for this fiscal year, for this school year, whatever year it is, Dr. McGowan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. It's a great one, whatever, whatever it is, wherever it is. Uh, last school year, the Brighton Believers Council selected 14 nominees to receive a Brighton Believers Award. We didn't forget about all of them in our school community. We wanted to make sure they're recognized for demonstrating the Brighton Believers character traits of integrity, respect, kindness, and self-control. These award winners are students, teachers, staff members, but are also open to parents, coaches, and community members. And the nomination form is available on our website at bcsd.org if you care to nominate somebody who would love that. Three people are here tonight that we are very excited for you to recommend and for the district to apply. I'd like to ask first that Claire Van Vakens come right up to the podium, please. <laughs> Along with Mr. Kaplan and the Dudley, if you could come on up too, as we make recognition because Claire is currently an incredible French Road student, but previously was at Council High. <laughs> Claire is now a third grader at French Road. She is nominated by her second grade teacher, Kathy Diamond. This is Diamond Road. Claire consistently demonstrates the trait of kindness in ways that exceed what would be expected behavior from a second grader. Claire truly cares about others and the empathy she shows towards her peers and teachers stands out. She makes sure all students are included. She has participated in our reverse integration experience with students from our 1214 classroom and has willingly asked to help out the students with special needs. She often expressed concern about how he felt and was always happy to take time away from what she was doing to be his partner during our math session. Claire demonstrates all of the brand new traits, but I think it would be necessary to acknowledge her kindness in particular. And her billion watt smile. Okay, I had that, but that's really amazing. <laughs> Claire, you seem like such a kind, thoughtful individual, and you're exactly what we would call would be a model for our kids. So thank you so much for being a brand believer, and congratulations. Claire, that amazing smile when you got to play for a moment. Mark and Rada, the school social worker contract was nominated by her parents, Courtney Cornelius. One of her children had a tough start to the year, and Courtney said Mr. Henrata went above and beyond to ensure he not only got the help he needed, but spent time out of his day with them. She wrote, Mark is amazing in communicating and getting through to children, and he truly understands how to figure out why the child is behaving the way they are. He takes time out of his day to stay in constant communication with me in order to keep me posted and check on anything new at home. With his hard work by son halfway into the year, has made a huge turnaround. Mark and Rana deserves the Brighton Leeds Award for the many years he has worked with the district and in recognition of all the children and families he has helped through challenging times in our community, ensuring children have nothing in the way of getting the wonderful education that Brighton has to offer. For this and so many other reasons, we're so excited to thank Mark for all of his service and congratulate him on his Brighton Leeds Award. Thank you. 
Laura Anderson, the restraining instrument music teacher at French Road Elementary School, was nominated by the student Bradley Paul. Bradley wrote, Miss Tyson is always very kind in her interaction with students. She is very encouraging and helpful when students learn their history. She is always there to help, no matter what school event it is. She is physically there to help at the film festival, the all county literature, rehearsals, and concerts, and at all of the bright and strange concerts. She is always accessible through email. She also finds ways to challenge students to help them improve. She always greets students with a smile. This time she is a great teacher, and I believe that she deserves the Bright and Believers Award. Lori has spent so much time and effort everything she knows she did, every concert, helping every child produce the great results in terms of the sound of year, but more importantly, in terms of how she feels for her. Thank you very much. I'm so proud to be colleagues with Mark and Lori. They are, they are who we are. They are what we hope to be, what we all aspire to do professionally. And Claire, what a great example you set for all of us. Thank you for brightening our days and those of all around you. So thanks for those who nominated and those who won. We appreciate it. We encourage everybody please to go on the website, nominate people for this wonderful award and recognition of making us really who we are. Thank you for taking the time. We have a full agenda tonight, so those people who are involved with the Bright Believers Award, there you go. Homework to be done in all those terms. Next up, uh, agenda item three is public participation. I do have the name of one participant. I will remind people if you'd like to speak, that's Dan Goldman right there at the podium. Raise your hand and he will come and find you and get a card. We need only your name and your town. We don't take street addresses or anything like that for security reasons. Um, first up, I've got Melanie Bernhardt. As Melanie's walking to the podium, I'll note that we allocate three minutes uh, per speaker in order to give everyone a chance to speak. We'll also let the board conduct and complete business on the night agenda. Uh, Karen, you go. Melanie, so you know it's a two minute forty five second march over the other one is the three minute march over the red one Karen down there just so you're on the clock. Hi, my name is Melanie. I've been here often as you know, and I haven't been here as much as I've been at the Rome County Legislature meeting since then and a bunch of other schools. Just a quick note to point out, you're the only district that never says the Pledge of Allegiance before a meeting on a lot. Um, the term I'm here to talk about tonight is something called cognitive dissonance. Uh, if it's a term you're not familiar with, it means basically you are really so into a belief of something that you don't want to hear any contradictory information. So it's another, it's really, it's aching to put your head in the sand or putting your fingers in your ears saying, la la la, I don't want to hear it. Um, but it still needs to be heard because the truth is the truth and it will come out and it is coming out. Um, so what I'm here to talk about, because I got to see all those wonderful children here, the only reason I come is because I truly care about children and I can protect their safety and I always think parents should have choice and everything. Uh, the CDC has made an announcement on Friday that they will be adding the COVID vaccine to the childhood vaccination schedule. I don't even know if some of you are aware of that. Um, of course, they don't know what the implications are yet because it will vary by state. But in Florida, the Attorney General has already come out and said this is not a safe and effective vaccine. In fact, it's damaging specifically young men. And it is not recommended in the state of Florida for young men. And I just want to make the school board aware because I will be looking for you to stand up for our children. I'm the finger pointing of, oh, it's the Department of Health. No, it's the CDC. And somebody needs to stand up for our kids. All parents should have a choice. Um, the other thing that happened just last week, Pfizer came out and said they have never done studies to see if their vaccine prevents prevent transmission. So that means all the messaging we got to go get this vaccine to protect our loved ones or our siblings or our teachers or our friends 
was a lie. And the reason I'm bringing that term cognitive dissonance, I know this might sound crazy, but I really want you guys to do research. I'm begging you to do research. I have been doing it for over two and a half years. I have thousands of hours in. I've read countless books on the subject. The information is out there. There is a Facebook group called Dying Suddenly News. I highly suggest you check it out. Um, and what it is, is not anti-vaxxers. It's people giving real stories of vaccine injury that is happening, and people are being told they're crazy or it's a mental condition. There's heart issues. There's unregulated blood pressure. They came up with a new term, sudden adult death syndrome. They also say die suddenly, die unexpectedly, die young. I really want you guys to do research. And a quick way to do research, thehighwire.com is on Thursdays. You can get all your information there. There are lawsuits everywhere against the CDC, the FDA, Dr. Fauci, the Biden administration, multiple corporations and hospitals. So please do your research and protect our children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Lainey, I just want to mention something to you really quickly before you walk away. Uh, the vaccine schedule that uh, might be produced and adding it to the vaccine schedule has nothing to do with schools. The legislature would have to enact a law that would require that as a vaccine for coming to school, which is codified the other vaccines that, you're, that you may be aware of, um, but that would have to be acted on by the legislature. That is not, in, in uh, my understanding, at all even being discussed. So there's this hysteria that has been created about the idea that schools are going to require it. I want to be very clear with the community. Schools are not requiring it. I don't anticipate schools requiring it. I don't anticipate the legislature acting on schools requiring it. So regardless of how we feel about the vaccine, that is not a topic and it really is uh, concerning to people when they feel as though it will be required. So again, wherever anybody is on it, that is not, I think, in the works at all. And in terms of vaccine information, we have different sources, you and I, and that's pretty well established over the past couple of years. Uh, we would encourage people to look at the Department of Health and CDC and make their evaluation as well and research the information about the effectiveness and the safety of the vaccine so as we're not using a board meeting to promote anything that may not be correct as well. We continue to support the use of the vaccine and encourage people to get vaccinated as the health department has asked us to continue to do and we do support that in the lane. So I want to be clear on that too. Keep Anyone else for public participation? Okay. Next up, uh, approval of the agenda tonight. Obviously, all the paperwork for this meeting has been received electronically by all of us. Motion to approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Moved by Susan. Second. Seconded by Esther. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the minutes from the October 11th uh, Board of Ed meeting. We've all had a chance to look at those, go through any um, situations or whatever. Does anybody have any changes or suggested edits to those minutes? Motion to approve the minutes as delivered. Second. Moved by Karen. Second. Seconded by Susan. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Next up is principal reports. And since we're at French Road, it makes sense probably to have principal tap and go first. <laughs> that is very tricky. <laughs> so good evening. Thank you, Ms. Evans, for having us to our house. I appreciate it. Um, great to be here. So, uh, Council Rock, we've got lots of exciting things happening. Uh, the first is we as a building have really looked, obviously we're having a mind and we're all in on having a mind, but really this summer we started looking at what our major space could look like, space that was included in the renovation, connected to our library. We have uh, turned it and coined it the Hab Lab the place where you can go to practice your habits of mind. Um, so our Hab Lab, our uh, Habits of Mind Committee, really took on starting to think about what that means. Nicole Yuri is sitting here with us tonight, the essential part of that. Um, and we had a soft opening. So if you think about a restaurant, it was a soft opening for our staff. 
Um, and we organized an activity where the teachers were involved in the maker mentality, really getting in, tinkering, pulling apart, creating. Uh, and we looked at creating a Tumblr Rock directory. I've included the link in there for you so that you can look. But we encourage all of our staff uh, to come in, uh, do some close exploration of themselves in a mirror to really see what they saw in the mirror, and then use a variety of materials to recreate their face, take a selfie of themselves, and then share their roles. So you can see Katie Fallon, our instructional technology leader for K-5 is up there. This is Jeffrey, our assistant principal there, and we have, I think, about like 70 people um, go in and have this experience. Um, for some, it was challenging to put them out of their comfort zone, much like our kids can be when they're in that place. There wasn't a right or wrong answer. There wasn't a way to, to do things. Um, and it was really great to be able to see that. And I think, probably for me, what was really awesome was then to see the kids starting to trickle in. And we're going to be using this with our students to be able to see examples of the adults doing it, but also to identify people throughout the building, because our building has grown so with the staff, not only in its geography, but with the number of staff in different phases. So a really exciting way. And then this week, uh, the Habit of the Mind Committee can to continue that maker mindset and have adults learning what that means before we start to dive in with our kids. Um, they've taken on a real-life problem, so a problem-based learning, which has been a problem that has been a thorn in my side, lost and found. It grows, it multiplies, no one picks anything up from it. It ends up being donated at the end of the year. If you walk through the thousands of dollars, it's great that it gets to a good place, it doesn't get thrown away, but as a parent of a second or a third grader and a first grader, oh, you better believe their names are on every single thing. That, because if you look, and there are no names on there, and there are LLB, and I mean fancy clothes that a lot of money was spent. So they are tackling that as a problem uh, to figure out how we can have a solution as a building. Um, and it's really great to see them engaging in that. Speaking of how to find, um, so we were offered a unique uh, opportunity we use a product called Wonder Grow, which is a series of animations that teaches, uses these five characters to teach the habits of mind. We've used them for several years. We were early adopters with them. I got an email about three weeks ago from the executive director, executive producer, who said, I'm coming to Rochester because my sisters live there. Could we come to your school, see it, and offer you some free assemblies? So sure, why not? It was probably one of the coolest things. So they developed the technology. So what you see up there in the top left is one of the characters, Miles, who was being manned on the other end um, in an animation studio by someone. And we were on a Zoom. So in the corner, you can see a picture, or you can see my, uh, my computer with the camera. So the man who was voicing and doing the animation was able to see our kids. So he was able to say, wave and say, hi, Mr. Davis, this is Miles, how are you? And so he said, you know, hi, little girl in the front row, can you stand up? You're in pink. And she stood up and he said, what's your name? My name is Susan. Hi, Susan, how are you? So it was live. Miles was talking to them. And he reviewed uh, managing impulsivity, shared a video about managing impulsivity, and then talked uh, about some examples with the kids, played some signs and says where they got to see. It was, it was magical, um, and it reminded me so much of why I love what I do, because they were so excited. So it was a really awesome, um, awesome opportunity that was presented to us. This month is Fire Prevention and Fire Safety Month. So our kindergarten class, so this is Firefighters from the Brighton uh, Fire Department coming to read to our students about fire safety, to remind them about the rules. First and second grade will have um, their meetings with the fire department later uh, this week in, uh, to celebrate Fire Prevention Month. We also have our counselors starting the social emotional lessons. Um, so uh, we do use Second Step, which is a great uh, program that teaches kids about empathy, understanding, and learning things and difference. This is Mr. Angle's kindergarten class. Um, Ms. Peterson is our kindergarten counselor. She's in there. And they were, um, the kids were having to show the face that they would use 
um, if a certain scenario happened, and the kids, the other kids had to guess the emotion that they were feeling. So that's one of the, the, the skills that the um, program teaches, is understanding what body language looks like and how to interpret it. Um, so I believe the girl there was showing that she was disgusted, um, and the students had to decide uh, what that was. This is a math wall that was created by our two math specialists, this is Hutter and Flanagan, uh, that is up just outside of the library. Uh, you meet different, can you solve this? And then this is a picture of Mrs. Beato, kindergartners on the way to and from lunch, sat down to talk about the problems and submit an answer uh, to that problem. All kids are able to do that, whether it's individually on their way through or um, as a class to make sure that they understand it. So something we're looking forward to hearing the answer and then um, getting surprises for kids to have the right answer. We have a motor space uh, that we specifically built uh, for um, large motor uh, indoor resets, but also um, for just opportunities to get inside. Um, we did write a grant uh, to the Brighton Education Fund, so thank you to them. Uh, and this is what we have. We have the carpeting um, squishy so that you know, it's safe in case to do the movement. We have large blocks build, and then all around the room there are stations that kids can go to um, to engage in some of that large motor uh, when they can't get outside or um, for, for class or to recess. Fall is bursting throughout Count Rock. As I walked up and down the hall, there were falls. There were paintings and writings about fall. There were writings and paintings about ghosts. Um, there was spider man. There was pumpkin uh, haikus. Um, and then just poetry, painting, all kinds of creative ways to celebrate the end of summer and the beginning of the fall. So uh, the other thing that's not included on this, I am updated it today, but um, it just makes me say, we do have um, an author who has just presented to us that is an author and illustrator team, husband and wife, who are, he is a call the cop winner. Uh, their last name is Rocco, I believe. Um, I had a whole slide that I added, but uh, they will be coming in mid-November. It was kind of a last-second opportunity that was presented to our librarian. They'll be coming and doing assemblies, sharing their books. Um, it is a brand new book called How to Send a Hug, uh, and it's really a great story about a boy who writes to his grandmother sending a hug through the mail. They're doing a uh, combination kind of presentation, which is the postmaster, the Rochester postmaster, to talk about how things go through the mail. Um, and again, thank you for the presentation button with these guests today for helping to sponsor that. But we will be having this book comes out the day before they arrive. We're doing that in a trend. Um, we did that last year with Jody Nolan. Um, and Adele Kibitsch does want to say that our last two authors have won significant awards after visiting Council Rock. So we feel like we may be the lucky charm that gets them. So she's assuring us that this is going to get them on call the cot as well. So uh, coming up Monday, of course, is Halloween, a big day at Council Rock. We have parades at 9 a.m. and 1.30. Uh, I have sent out a list to, to parents about which parade their teacher has signed up for because it is a voluntary sign up out on our bus loop. Just a reminder that if the weather is poor, we will pray inside and parents won't be able to come to be able to accommodate that. But we are very hopeful. We've already looked ahead and it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. Sunday, uh, just a reminder to everyone that it's the last time I think daylight savings time ends and we fall back. Election day is Tuesday. We celebrate that in a variety of different ways in our classrooms, um, talking about the democratic process. And then Friday is um, No School Prevention Day. Uh, Wednesday, November 16th is uh, our picture retakes. We had a great experience with our new picture vendor, um, and they were fantastic and we're looking forward to the picture retakes. And Friday the 18th is our first of several half days. I'll continue to remind you what that means. We just went at 11.30. Our buses will leave at 11.30, uh, so if you have a bus that normally leaves, it normally leaves at 2.45, figure out how long it normally takes them to get home, add a few minutes, because um, it will be a little bit chaotic that day, but that will be for parent-teacher conferences, and then, of course, Wednesday through Friday, the 23rd and 26th, there's some school for, uh, for Thanksgiving. Any questions? 
as usual, a lot is going on at the uh, Halloween parade. It's always a major sort of event for Council Rock, so good on you guys. We'll keep our fingers crossed for good weather. Any questions for the board? Thank you. Uh, how about Town Hall?
Um, the whole purpose of CPLP is to basically improve the culture and climate of Brighton High School, reviewing data, survey data, and then coming up with interventions and plans to help with that. And I, I'm not going to go into all the different things that we've done in the last three years that have been student run ideas, um, but for our, our topics uh, this, this school year right now, we're actually reviewing the panorama data that the students um, provided in their spring survey. And all these students who are here got copies of the raw data. They're reacting to it using a similar protocol that I use with the staff when we're looking at data to keep it objective. So we share that data, they're working together, and then had small groups get together from, um, from breakout groups to talk, um, and then we shared as a, as a group. And that feedback will be given to our school-based equity team uh, the next time we meet with them. But an incredible group of kids, and they're just uh, one of my favorite um, groups to work with. Flex is back. We plan to work in the hallways and get students eating together, doing work. That's where they choose to sit. Kids out back playing a little football, soccer. Um, students eating when, when the weather is nice. We have some new furniture purchased through um, the class of 2022. Some tables underneath the pool pavilion, so we put those permanently there. Of course, um, there's a variety of classrooms that are open. Teachers in multiple rooms meeting with students for assistance and support. Basketball in the gym for those students who choose to play basketball or go to the weight room and more kids getting help um, in the math classes in particular. Or back in. Our superintendent's conference day, grades for equity. So we started, um, we've been talking about grading since 2016. Um, it's a pretty uh, uh, broad topic, and we're focusing on how um, we might be applying some of the practices from the book Grading for Equity, which is many of our faculty have read. We started to implement procedures. On our conference day, we read chapters five and six as an entire group and then reflected on it. And uh, we have several faculty who are getting together with group reads, and I think um, we've been changing a lot of different practices that I think uh, the majority of our teachers are now feeling really good about looking at their grading and their approaches uh, quite differently than maybe they did in the past when they started, and some really good um, attention to these new approaches. I'll give you more information on that to get things clear. Parents Square, of course, is being rolled out across the district. We talked about that on the conference day as well. And the one thing I tried to stress with our faculty, um, they had a lot to take in, but you know, that's the bold part here, that any message that they send to Parents Square, especially as they um, blast to an entire class or all of their classes, will be translated into the language of choice for that family. And to me, that's one of the biggest reasons to start using it, rather than trying to send emails through school pool, which you'll reach the parents, but they can't do what parents wear them. So we went through that. My goal is to get every uh, single staff member using parents wear regularly for mass mailings or mass emails uh, by the end of December. We also have been talking more to students about getting students wear hats so they can receive some kind of internet, like they do with the mind. Mine is a huge thing. I love using personal coaches and staff members to communicate with students. But, you know, with uh, the changes in uh, laws regarding student privacy and things like that, and I'm using the line, so I'm doing square. The same thing as parents where but it gives the high school students the ability to do a parent We went over the basics of parents square and helped them out. And we're also, as part of our panorama data, looking at the data that we took last year, the sense of belonging that our faculty feel was a part of the school, not just our students, but our staff as well. Had a really neat activity that day, right after lunch. Uh, they got together with people they didn't know, asked, answered, and talked to one another about various questions. Then they had to solve a puzzle, and then they got to go find a, uh, a box of snacks for the other team. So then they had to take a job. They are out of fun, and it was, it was a good day. Uh, also, we did a small play that's coming up uh, this coming weekend, 7 p.m. Friday and Saturday. The end of the market period already is the comments of November 15th. Um, that's coming up shortly in about two weeks. And our grades will be on the airport just in time to Thanksgiving. Um, and that, that little break that we have, so that will be good to know. Um, Veterans Day on November 11th, we're going to be school on that day, celebrating the veterans. And um, Porter, as we talked about, 
I think I talked about last time that uh, our first go-round has been pretty inclement weather, but everybody made the best of it. Um, they used what they had to be resourceful <laughs> and have a great time. We did two uh, day trips. Two, it was a two day trip, no overnight. And uh, really, other than being able to sleep in a bunk, they had every other normal experience of outdoor ad. Kudos, as I said last time, to the organizers and all that they did to kind of be flexible and shift and change and iterate to make sure that students had a great team building experience that they did. We also had our first activity night in October, last Friday night. The CPSA put on a sixth grade activity night, and as you can tell, it was a dress up for Halloween uh, evening. They had some contests, and it was just an amazing night. All the students were dancing, lots of fun, and I was amazed by what the CPSA can put on how many parents show up to uh, chaperone, and it's just it's absolutely seamless and lots of smiles and a good time. We have <coughs> seventh grade in the first weekend of November, and then the first weekend in December we have eighth grade coming up. So we're going to space out this year, but we're super excited for them to continue. And this, this just happened on Friday, which was really neat. These are three of our students who are from Afghanistan. And um, the Heidi Hendricks, who is our math and events specialist at the middle school and high school, and working with one of them, realized that they had never carved a pumpkin before and never had that experience. So she and Mrs. Halligan uh, bought some pumpkins, and the boys spent the afternoon going through the whole process of carving their pumpkins and making their jack lanterns and, and then heading out to home with them. So it's a really great experience. Well, we do we had uh, the start of clubs in October. We had a club fair at the very end of September, and uh, we had some amazing turnout, which is super exciting. We have over 30 clubs running at the middle school, and I just had the creator standing at the door today asking me if they could start another club, and I have two other positions on my desk for different clubs. So. Um, it, that comes from, I think I told you last time, that I challenge every student that by the end of the year they need to tell me that they've been involved in something at school and that if we don't currently have it, let's find a way to make it happen so that everybody has a way to be connected in one way to perform in school. So I'm glad to see that they're taking uh, my work to heart and we, like I said, we've had a ton of um, interest in the different clubs that we have. BSU started already their work on their uh, their paint, their rock painting for their annual rock garden display out in um, in our courtyard. The morning show, I just want to take a minute to highlight the morning show. We have uh, Mr. Tellick and Mr. Elkin, a new technology teacher, are co-facilitating the morning show this year, and um, they have really just completely revamped it. They're still working through some technical difficulties. Um, because they want to do so much more than our uh, technology is allowing them to do. They're really pushing it to the limit. So we've had some streaming difficulties and things like that, but they're persistent and um, they really, to them, they take to heart the fact that they want it to be the way that every single student looks forward to starting their day at PCMS. Uh, so they're, they're trying some new things out. Uh, they're getting more students involved. They're actually doing a lot of sixth graders in as well, which is not super typical for a morning show. Usually it's just seventh and eighth graders. Um, and I'm really excited to, to see where this is going to go. If, if any of you remember Alex, he actually worked behind the scenes here years ago um, as a student at the AHS and helping to videotape board meetings, but he was big on the, on the morning show at the high school. That's like his big uh, memory as a student. And as Brian and he wants to make sure that he can give that same great feeling of passion to all students. So that's been fun to watch about just in a few short weeks. We also, on our conference day, are really continuing our efforts around multi-tier systems of support. So we spent our afternoon of the conference day really building that common <coughs> language and understanding around what multi-tier systems of support are for our students. And we also shared the new processes that our RPI leads have created to make sure that all of our students are getting the support that they need in academics and attendance and behavior. And our focus, I think we said this last time, is really looking at what our students need and then looking at our gap so that as we think about Tier 1 universal instruction, everybody's getting the same experience and they're getting that same um, information across the board so that we can build on and support students. 
And then lastly, our face to know this week is Red Ribbon Week. Today was camouflage day. Uh, we couldn't see anybody. Um, <laughs> so October 31st, Halloween, always a great day for us. We have our staff Halloween contest, and then, of course, we have all of our students who still look forward to getting dressed up. I've had a ton of emails this week about what, what people can wear and what they can wear, so it's been great. Uh, in November, we're celebrating Native American Heritage Month, and I just threw that in there as a reminder to myself as well that um, our uh, culture and climate committee has met this year, and we're doing something new. Each of our clubs is taking on a month. Um, so for uh, Native American Heritage Month, I can't remember what club is taking on, but they're, they're forming all of their activities around the theme of that month. Um, and doing things on the board and so and really making it a big deal in our building. So each month, the clubs are doing something a little bit different to celebrate. As I said, we've got our other activity nights coming up, school picture retake. Uh, our seventh grade annual Veterans Day assembly is on November 10th. I think we actually need to turn some people away that have really had such a great response. <coughs> Uh, in terms of speakers. So we're going to try and figure out if maybe we can bring some people in for our luncheon and not necessarily to speak and then vice versa just to give everybody an opportunity to have a voice and for our students to meet all of them. November 15th is my birthday and Dr. McGowan's birthday. It's a great day. It's also the end of the first marking period. And Dr. Hall is on the 14th. or the 15th? 18th. That's close. But. Uh, on November 17th, we'll have, we're coming back to our annual Thanksgiving. We didn't have it last year and the year before that because of COVID. Um, Mrs. Connolly in our 12.4 classroom is also bringing her students and family in to join in the celebration as well. So we're excited to kind of broaden that a little bit. November 18th and 19th, TCMS Musical Into the Woods. Please come and see that. The students have been working so hard. And then, of course, recess for the Thanksgiving break. Modified sports begin at the end of the month. And um, the 30th brings us into sports season. Or it's the competition. Lots of good stuff happening. Thank you very much. Any questions for Danielle? I think um, of the 30 clubs, my sixth grade, I think we signed up for 28 of them. So we're doing a lot of driving. So thank you for all those offerings. That's great. Yeah, we love it. Lashar, I think it's your turn. Today was the last thing of yesterday was wear red. So these are some of our 
scholars in the center. Tomorrow, Brian believes in wearing Bruin gear or Bruin Cummins. Brian Cummins. The Mom's Golfer Club. We will go to the club on this night. The last meeting is at the factory in the morning. It allows more students to have transportation and be equitable so they can get the bus in early in the morning. 41 students signed up. 38 of them showed up for the first meeting. We formed our students of color, and we have one of the languages that are represented in the So that was the first meeting in the library. They're actually all grown in the library. We have the of the space. Not sure where that space is going to be. But that's a good time. This is one of the lessons um, during the room time. The students are practicing self-control and also have the mind advantage and impulsivity. They have to mirror each other. And you're not supposed to know who's actually leading, and it's actually really cool. I'm the last, I'm going to give you a right. Thank you for the right meditation fund. This is a common thing that was created for students in one of the, one of the closets, but um, it's almost completed, but it's a space for students to go and need the time to calm down, flex. There's games in there. Um, there's fidget toys and more pictures up than the picture earlier. On the other side was our faculty meeting just yesterday with Andrew's curriculum project, um, one of our FEL, um, with the staff. This is our new students' luncheon, lunch room, um, run by our primary project, and also fire prevention month, so one of the fire starters, um, one of the fire safety. I'm also reading to students with classes, and this is one of our third grade classes that I went to and read the book um, in honor of Spanish Heritage Month. Um, so it was cool because the teacher is also bilingual, so the book was in Spanish and English. So I was reading it in English, and he was reading it in Spanish. The next priority area that I'm going to is the student and family experience. I'm collaborating with Jeff Green. Um, he's attending our PSA, PPSA meetings with the parents. We just checking out all of our new students and our urban suburban students. We call parents to a check in. We have a certain time to meet. We have great entertainment, single, movie night, meeting with the principal tomorrow. We have our first fun food um, Friday. It's our fun food and our mental health meeting. And we had a successful Hispanic parents celebration. And yesterday we celebrated the wild. So here's the Wally display outside. One of our counselors wearing a traditional dress. Um, we have movie night, bingo. And this is the student work for Hispanic Heritage Month, along with the bulletin work for Hispanic Heritage Month. Um, for our third graders, their presentation was from Firefighters in RKC of Latin Descent. Um, they came to talk about fire safety and talk to the parents' words. One of our students was able to put on the gear. The next presentation was for our fifth graders. Um, this is a who who home to the Chicago book. He came and did drumming for um, the fifth grade students and talked about the music that's associated with the drumming. And during our room then for the entire class, for the entire school, we had all of the events come to perform, and they're actually students in writing. The youngest one is at Comfort Rock, and the oldest one is at Frank, here at Frankville. So, things around action is excellent. Has the nine writers is doing class and business. It's shared the newsletter. I went with them with our ELA class for grade 45. Teachers are meeting, or I'm sorry, actually, third and fourth, not fourth. He's going to be with the literacy coach every two cycles. We've had a discussion around what food components we want to use. Um, we're working on creating a schedule to keep the community to the classroom. There's currently a math book study happening about building thinking classrooms and mathematics, and teachers are incorporating number of well. technology. We have a tech mentor meeting, there's a tech kind of after school. In October, we the introduction of the book theater. And we're trying to make the space, make the space, um, space to incorporate thinking routines attached to a lesson and have to combine. So here, that's in our main space right now. I'm Mr. Brunson. The 
Now, the picture of this is the Indian way, and the light from the place was probably like really dark, not light. So we really lit up the place, and I think it, it makes it feel more welcome. So that's one of the little things that remains to share. And these are the LED lights in the classroom. Partial locker replacement in the building. These are um, the newer lockers that were replaced. So some of the work that's um, being planned and designed right now is with SCD for approval is uh, renovation. So the big, uh, big project is the replacement of the gymnasium uh, floor. Uh, and as we were working on program requirements with, um, with our team staff, one of the main areas of concern was the air quality in the gymnasium. And we've you know, heard that over the years um, with the gymnasium and kind of a musty cell sometimes. And a lot of that is because we've done air conditioning in the gymnasium. So while we've done things with um, vents and valves and everything, we are taking the opportunity to do the gymnasium right and add air conditioning to it. Uh, when that is the replacement of the cooling tower, again, we always want to take the opportunity to invest in the infrastructure and the program systems as well. A major improvement to the site is going to be the replacement of both playgrounds. And I have to give uh, credit to Marin Jeffries, who was here at that committee last year. Um, and when you see the design, it's going to be a really uh, community investment uh, with our playgrounds. And actually, I just received a text message from Mr. Tom Murray tonight, a community member. They just completed the replacement of the exterior lights, new LED exterior lights. So we were able to do that um, outside of the kind of the construction piece. So the followers that have been approved as part of the 2023 capital project. Well, let's go. They just say, because I never want to say something in front of that to be perfect. You want to quickly explain what that to be is, and there's nobody who might be around for me. Yeah, so um, if you think about your um, your home when you need a building permit for your desk, our, all of our plans and specifications have to go to the New York State Education Department and require commission approval. So our design team, after the voters approve a capital project and authorize the expenditure of funds, then the design team starts their detailed work in designing the plans and specifications and they submit that for SCD for us to obtain the, the building permit. Um, and unfortunately, that takes months and months. So we were really hoping to have a permit um, secured for the, the playgrounds um, and been sitting with SCD for a month, and we're likely going to miss a deadline uh, to secure a certain price on the equipment. And we're going to have an percent increase because we have not got that uh, approval in time. Uh, so the rest of the work that we're, we're talking about, you know, likely we'll, we hope to have approval by January. And we issue the bids and we have the award contract. So, because of that delay in sitting with NTD, we're going to miss the summer construction for this work and uh, we'll have to schedule it with some IDP issues in the summer of 24 instead of the target in summer of 23, unfortunately. I'm going to go back to you quickly. Anybody who drives up and down in the you know that during the summer or on the weekend, both playgrounds are in full use. And there's always a crowd to get there. Um, playing some family things like that, so those playgrounds have an impact on the community as well, not just our school population. And one thing is uh, for the playgrounds, you know, the schools are going to be able to play around for a little bit, and actually, um, I didn't be on the surface, and that we were going to ride over a little bit. So, I'm excited, I hope you can enjoy the summer of 2020 here. Um, it's going to be great. So these are the priorities of future consider consideration. The bus so a reconfiguration, um, rehabilitation of the main exterior, for example, the awning, and then also just improvement to the corridor and the common area, and also flexible learning environment with our classes. But the big future consideration is our bus loop. So currently we have to wait a bus. In the morning, 15 buses uh, pull in first, while the second wave, they wait at the beginning until they're called down. So the first wave leaves, and then the second wave comes in. So close on our arrival, this is a little bit, but at this middle is where it's really later. When we do start with the second wave, they're leaving around 3.5 degrees. So the first wave comes in, and the 17 buses in the first wave, and then the second wave, we're going to be in 
Canadian by bus. So imagine about 200 or so students in a line in the gymnasium at 3.30 until 3.45. It's fun. So <laughs> the bus loop again is uh, a consideration where we're like, let's really think about this and how we can get all our buses in so everyone can get home instead of being um, in a loud bed. Really loud. They can't help. They can't. I'm excited to think about the possibility of what we can do with the bus. Oh, so that's the second way that it comes over to me in this area of time. All right, I think we finished. With that, I'd like to introduce Brian Slimsky from uh, FBI Design. And what I wanted to just educate the board in the beginning of um, our process when we're developing a capital project, have them talk to this uh, this process right here. Is this is the framework for all our future capital planning uh, investment in our so. Right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Brian Slinsky, one of the principals and founding partners of the FBI Design Group. I'm um, here to share a little bit about what the Building Condition Survey is and does for you. Um, for those that have been around a little bit, uh, in 2005, the state, the state education department, mandated that you will do a Building Condition Survey every five years. Uh, that changed in the last go around in 2015 because everybody in the state, over 700 schools, are trying to do this. Um, so you guys are now this year, uh, and you're off of the five-year cycle, but you will now from this year for the every five years. Uh, the re intent, I guess, of this survey is to take a look and audit all of your buildings. Um, the state's looking for things that are good, bad, and the ugly of all school buildings throughout the state of New York. Uh, the first piece of that puzzle is in nothing on like field investigations. Um, our team along with a set of engineering um, members go through every building, every room, uh, all the site that we walk through, and we're looking for those things that are code or infrastructure related. Um, so I've been doing this for over 20 years. We complete all the building, we're able to go through and find those and find all of those issues very easily. Um, looking through some of your historical documentation, we'll also be able to put together some of the history of buildings and why things are moving or changing within your building. As a matter of fact, uh, if we're dealing with your floor here, we're going to eventually show you some things and why things are happening with that issue floor and why we need to replace that. Um, but that only brings us to the components that we see and that we observe. And I think the, the next step in that, in part two, is the thing that we just saw that came out of the principal evidence discussion was. Those items that each of you are facing on a daily basis, so how do we do that? Uh, that's meeting with staff and really bringing some collaborative process into that by asking them questions. And it's quite interesting when you sit down and we begin those with, you know, how do you like this room, how do you like that room, it's good, it's good. And as we continue on with the discussion, what we really find out is it's good, but. And the most situations are the, what's the next step of making that better? Why? It really is great, but it's not working as well as it could. And we start to set out those issues. Uh, we do that both with principals, vice principals, and we do that with custodial staff personnel. I recommend we went with um, facilities from yesterday. Uh, we do that internally with the business office. We will be doing that with the superintendent. Um, things at that level come up to us in regards to mandates the state are loving you, and then you have to respond to the physical asset. Um, so we try to incorporate those as well. Why do we gather all that? And we gather that with photos uh, and the documentation. Because we then have to put a solution to that for you and how we would resolve that. So the bus situation here is quite an interesting situation. Um, the problem learning about that and looking at the way you get to do that is quite an unsafe situation. Um, the way you're trying to say it. It's the situation you're dealing with, we can make it a lot safer. You're back in the buses, you're having to add time in the delays, uh, we're having to go through a series, one bus to the other bus. And so we're going to really give you solutions for you, putting monetary values to that. Um, that is incorporated with your business office, and the financial advisor, and we start to put dollar figures to this. Um, and putting those dollar figures together, 
It's usually a very large number when we finally make this presentation to you towards the end of the year and into the subsequent year in the annual year. You're going to see a big number. Um, don't hang. Um, it's usually it's over $100 million of work that has to be done. The good thing about that is what it is doing is it is putting together a documentation so that you can start to look at a long range plan and how that long range plan should be implemented financially and fiscally responsible. Uh, how you take care of the priorities uh, that are most critical to you this year, into the next year, uh, and we're already having discussions in and around what the next project will be and some of those issues. So that's prioritization piece. We begin in our small group. Uh, there's usually additional people that are brought to bear in terms of discussion of what's priority one, what's priority two, what's priority three, and then we start to plan that out for you. And in, in most cases, the end result is a 20 year plan. So just, just like, like your home, when your roof goes uh, on your house, well, you hopefully we're planning for that, that your roof could be a 20 to 25 year roof. Uh, here in the school district, obviously you have a lot more of those. And what we've spent these years are millions of dollars. So we want to work together and prioritize those in the political planning process, uh, thereby going to the taxpayer, fiscally responsible, and finding the funds and planning for the funds that they believe we've spent these over a long period of time. That is my quick synopsis of trying to be critical. Are there any questions? No, you guys have been in for a long time to the drive. All of our buildings, and I feel like over the last four or five years, we've done such a much better job of understanding our current condition, getting at the thing. I think the, the stuff most people don't do, what we call the behind the wall work, ADPAD, drugs, all that sort of stuff, we do a lot of work on that. Some of it is good, it's more than a lot of it is job. So the assessment that we do in our learning is deeply important, but it makes no sense to pick up a classroom and go to the same thing, start with stuff. Um, ask for information. Uh, 
um, was presenting the work that they do. Um, so Act for Education is a group that represents all local public school districts. Um, Brighton is just one of many of the outstanding public schools in our region, and Act specifically um, highlights the good work that all the public schools are doing. Um, some of the things that we talked about that people aren't often aware of, um, how central schools are in our communities. Um, so the public schools in our area are the second largest employer in the region. Um, and so we have a very massive workforce that I think people don't think about. Um, and that um, they also emphasize how much of the budget you know, that we all work to create goes directly back into the community, 80% of the budget. Um, and they also wanted to highlight um, school district wide that here in Monroe County, not just Brighton, but in Monroe County, the um, high school graduation rate is um, 90%, which is much greater than the national average, and across the United States, it's only 79%. And so um, it was really just about collaborating and sort of celebrating the schools and what they give to the community. So we're going to continue now. Well, let's play. Uh, I'm really excited to meet you and attend a uh, meeting in October, but I want to be able to be part of the group that we're doing and the body and the legislative committee for the future. We are one of the um, figures of these that to hand out to our legislative committee that educate them on issues that affect um, our schools and our students. Uh, they range from school safety, um, the constitutional obligation, the New York State government has to schools, um, the paper on the federal role in public education. Um, so that's an interesting opportunity to do whatever it can do. And I'll be able to come in the next meeting. Well, next up is Bowling. I never report to that I was going to give a couple hacks on Mark from. From Mark from the representatives there. Um, the 101 Bowling Board has received updates both in regards to their ongoing national projects as well as their internal audit reform, which was a positive report. They also did a recognition for their 2021 2022 tenure recipients in our October 6th meeting, which is always a great recognition. And in terms of the 101 facilities that were new, they just completed the school of the I'm not really quite bored that. If I had uh, a separate conversation with him, we'll see if we can find time. Everybody's getting in the show top right now, and I know that. But the best time to tour 101 Bowling School is very important. It is basically during the day when it's in fact a lot of kids from the market. So we'll try to set that up and do our best to coordinate and keep the schedule knowing how difficult that is. So, um, more great news of Bowling um, any other board member report? I'm going to start with you. Yes, uh, I am part of the Bowling Equity Training Board in Brighton School. Um, we're unable to attend the summer meeting. Um, I did attend the meeting that um, as the past Thursday. Um, they focused primarily on the results of the panorama doing a survey data um, that they um, uh, began to make sure they over the over the summer and really talked about the areas that we're doing well in and the areas that need improvement. Um, and in particular, um, we're doing well, uh, very well in as far as um, diversity and inclusion of the students feeling um, very confident about that, um, cultural, cultural awareness, awareness um, and we need some work on student and teacher relationships um, and the overall school climate and a sense of belonging. So um, we are focusing on ways to improve that. The hiring practices committee, the information that the hiring practices committee uh, received is from the school and the debate team. So now we are able to um, have a meeting that, that will be uh, scheduled um, coming up uh, in the next month. And our curriculum uh, council will be meeting on the next one as well. So, how many of the areas you've got of, but there are certainly some more of the ones that you're going to try to start to get Yes. Great. Karen. All right, so I'm going to be PSA on October 12th. Um, all of the things will take the support that they provide to our families and our students and our staff. Um, they're so busy with the beginning of the year. Um, so I'm looking forward to watching and being a part of our kind of the efforts throughout the year. 
and I think it's in hand to stop for the school to be effective in the next year. And I'm going to get to the point from being deaf and we're discussing how to end deaf feeling in our day. And I'm thinking about going forward and thinking about ways that we can make sure that every and every person feels in the space. As you mentioned, I have the opportunity to do an office with our staff. We uh, reviewed the results of our um, independent and external audit. Um, there is a very action plan presented um, at the end of every audit cycle. That's very standard. Um, you know, again, thanks to the staff. So, things on our action plan are quite long. We're going to do them another point to the year. And just work with the team. I have led a bit of time in a tweet. Um, and I'll meet again with the academic intervention um, services and the intervention review committee on the Oh, one more. We rely on kind of another kind of board space association law conference at the end of September, uh, where we spoke with experts about school safety and able to speak with the general counsel for the state education. Um, I had the opportunity to attend the school based equity meeting where you were at first, and it's my first meeting that I attended under the leadership of Principal Evans. And um, it was wonderful to see Principal Evans in action leading a team. I had my um, second year old who had a tag along, and she was an active part of the meeting as well. So, so a really <laughs> wonderful experience. Um, so I, I'm excited to be on that committee. Um, we reviewed the panel and the data um, as well, and we are working on putting actual, tangible goals in place so that we're not just so here and talking about it, but there are, are benchmarks that we're, we're striving to, to hit. And so I think that's really great. It's a very great energy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Dr. Hanson. Um, I'm going to ask you and the other thing, some of us did last the and the community leader process. And that was really interesting in a new format and I really talking to crowd and had about 45 minutes. He made a brief presentation and went on a little bit as well, and they took a lot of opportunities to talk about what was the and the questions they had. It was really a great conversation, and when I called the end of our initial kind of class, and then we got out of class. So it was really the beginning. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Dr. Hunter, you're going to say the school board association, the committee, and the Came up with a priority list to recommend to the board of directors at Geneva. Uh, um, and they approved it. Um, one, a few items on that uh, priority list was um, <coughs> the process for resolution that comes in the United States School Board Association and looking at things from an equity lens. And so that was approved. Um, thinking about what resources students need to get into school safely. That was in Something that came out that I knew that is a problem across the United States um, in terms of um, students getting to school and whether they have access to transportation as well as another priority. And then um, just thinking about what kinds of offerings that the United States School Board Association can give to their local um, school boards here in the East Monroe County School Board Association um, in terms of training school board members. Um, in terms of the equity and the benefit. So, all of those were set by the board, and we'll move forward in the new board. And the state committee will represent all the 
Um, I also think I'm involved with the building committee, Lou alluded to this before, and when we finished up the capital project, we started in 2017, just a couple of things about them there. There's one, um, the main work on 21 and 22, and the next set of um, projects that we'll be looking at. Very, very pleased to become a lot more disciplined in how we're going to be trying to be back by taking care of the building. A point on that, and I've heard from Sean say this, and from Lou say this, and from John and Ellie around, Lou say this, but Kevin Rawlings handles this building as an outstanding job. He's not here at the moment, I want to make sure he recognizes it. He's given how outstanding the building seems. It can't be said enough. He does do great work, and um, they don't. A lot of the work I mean, from Charm team and the new school um, of getting out of that. It's getting very close to the point of building's perspective. And it's one of the reasons we're going to get the great information on all these people in the news. I just want to recommend them. And really, Julian, I had a note. Um, we don't get concerns. We don't communicate with uh, the community enough. And we're always trying to figure out different ways to talk to the community. And one of the ways we do that is to really just practice that we do a couple of three times a year where we hear concerns and then we talk about a bunch of things. So well attended by the board, well attended by the community, 40 something people, and I think only one or two people had to leave in prior commitment. So a lot of it was really well done. So thanks to him for setting it up. That's all I got. So we'll turn it over to you. We'll turn it over to you to return to the center. Hey, Paul, I'm sorry about that. You can get to one more question. Um, so thank you as always for the opportunity to share what we're doing in our classroom. Um, we enjoy the pictures. Uh, the animal department sent me all the pictures from their October 1st potluck picnic, which was called the Buckland Park. And I couldn't bear to not include any of the pictures that they sent. So I did spend probably more time um, just kind of reading them. Um, but it was just so wonderful. And you can just see the happiness and engagement on the family. Um, the networking. Yeah. Haven't done much better job hitting so many English is a new language. Thank you. Um, so it's wonderful. So what the English is a new language department in Brighton does is they host a picnic and they invite all the families to come and they have a potluck. So you can see the amazing spread of food. And I was pretty intentional in showing all families. You can see three of our English and language teachers um, on one page. And then a picture with just all the students, um, all the amazing food. I think I may have to go next year. Um, and then everybody chowing down in the food. And then I just loved this picture of the kids all looking at the dessert <laughs> um, and just so engaged. Um, um, so what a wonderful event that they put on. It's really incredible. Congrats to them. And then we'll go to Council Rock. Um, Council Rock, we have uh, Mrs. Bucci shared that she uses the kindergarten Lego wall that was funded by the Bright Education Fund. And when students come, she reads all her lessons. She does a, a, a bowl of more of Lego, but then she creates a Lego for each child. Um, with their name on the flag. So just a wonderful, exciting thing for kindergartners coming in. And first grade students in Caitlin Baker and Lynn Files, I think this was one of the photographs that the Minister Chapman had up to. They celebrated Dot Day, which is um, a, an idea based on Peter Reynolds' book, The Dot. And they came dressed in dots, they built dot structures, they performed a song about dots. Um, but the great thing about Peter Reynolds, if you've never read any of his books, is he really talks about empathy and community and kindness in, in each one of his titles. So it's a really beautiful little mural there. Um, Going. Um, this is actually students using um, one of our newer spaces. We call the 
I call it the blueberry wedge. I'm not sure that's the actual official name of it because it's full year, so we call it blueberry. Um, but it's a great area for us to bring our kids out into to do some hands-on learning in a different space and have a different mindset on some of their spaces. So they build buildings out of these 10 blocks and then they calculate and they demand for numerical value based on what they know. So that was great. Um, we had a, this is a photograph from the pages from the work that we did over the summer with our House of Mind Committee. And we actually went in and used the maker space and tried to put ourselves in that maker mindset. Um, that was that led into the activity where we created the staff directory. We were thinking about how best to engage staff. Um, Maria Murillo is excellent for helping us with all of the, the teaching that goes on with that. Um, but Andrea Yaman in extended studies, she actually had students um, create their own posters for the Hab Lab. So if you go into the Hab Lab, the, all the second grade classes have their own poster that they created. So it's just another way to, to be engaged. Um, one really cool thing about this was that if the students and the adults when we did the directory was the idea was to create something and then take it apart. Um, so it wasn't just create and create some stuff, but it had to be then kind of adjust that and wrap that. Um, moving on to CARS, CARS technology classes, um, they're learning the difference between hardware and software. So they created um, a bowling alley and are having their robots that they um, coded to go bowling. So you can see a great photograph there. The Friends Rainbow Club um, had so many numbers, over 70, that they actually split it into two groups. They have a third and fourth grade group and then a fifth grade group. They meet every other Wednesday. They talk about respect, empathy, identity, gender, family, friendships, anti-bullying, and acceptance. Um, Lanny Nostrowski is in charge of that, and they designed their own buttons for um, International Pronouns Day, which was last week. So they, you can see Lonnie hard work with her button. The fifth grade students in science class had to build a way to move 100 milliliters of water from one beaker to another with specific constraints. So again, you can see this on the floor, making, doing, um, collaborating, problem solving, having to listen to each other. So great stuff. And we on to uh, instrumental music. 93% of fourth graders are starting an instrument this year, which is just remarkable. Um, so they had their tryouts, they picked their instruments, and lessons have begun. At TCMS, the orchestra students um, were selected to participate in junior high area all state and orchestra, which is going to be held in a couple of weekends. Um, and you can see that the students that were picked from the orchestra and the people that were the students that were picked from for band. And then last, uh, Brighton High School went to the EFSTA conference at Syracuse University. Um, and it was the Crossroads Yearbook, Galaxy, uh, Literary Magazine, the school paper, which is Trap, Trap Zoid, um, went. And they will announce the awards uh, later this month. So I'm sure I'll be sharing that in November. Great stuff. Okay, next up, PBS report. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I'll start with Calcara. The backpack and school supply drive was very successful. So we're going to be back next for the black as well as two handloads of supplies. Items were donated by JSC Council to the neighbors who provide school supplies to little children and need them. Thanks to our co-chairs, Sarah Hunter, and Angelina Shimkus. Um, child wash and curriculum tonight. Thank you for sure. Uh, spring and joy. It's an overwhelming number of children on all three nights. This is a much needed service for many parents. We're hoping to recruit more volunteers in the future and be able to accommodate the team. Uh, for sure. Thank you to Julie Lane, Courtney Cornell, organizing this, carrying out the tasks such as collecting and organizing orders. Helping students get ready and get their best and managing their children during 
Library and special helpers, signups are available. We have Karen come in to help. Um, first Friday, 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 one in November, kindergarten, one in December for the first grade, and one in January for the second grade. Hospitality, we collect the snacks, we tend to report back to the meeting, which at this point is probably the best. The front row, we're in the process of onboarding two building chairs, a welcome Melanie Wolf and a bell wagon. We help staff appreciate the breakfast at 916 to celebrate the first full week of school. Our ability to choose is a huge variety of references as well as decorative space. Uh, so they didn't stay off the fourth grader and Friday is an awesome thank you a video, a hilarious outtake video. Then it's teachers to watch that just can't even do our code. Uh, then the same night, we had the Friday family picnic in the evening. Families had the opportunity to order sandwiches and pizza ahead of time. On the day of the event, families purchased pizza, water, and two boxes, and ice cream from um, Dine. Come and come. It was very well attended and the designers and the story of self food. Uh, we supported and presented in the first team, the principal. We attended both curriculum nights. We had a table and information regarding PSA, little calendars, and we provided children uh, we provided child care for both nights. Uh, we wrapped up our school slide drive uh, with three boxes of supplies um, that had been saved for any students need. Uh, we went to Mary Drive to take it off. School pictures were very success, and then the feedback from the designer was very positive. We had our first bingo event for third grade, and upcoming at 1026, we would be in the principal, 1026, 1027, we would be in the grade bingo, and 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, First meeting with the principal via Zoom was on December 29th at noon. There were 18 participants of the upcoming events. Um, the PSA information meeting was shared with Larry on October 27th at 7 p.m. And that's all. Great. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm Mr. Bates. In town, Brian, and closely with the schools, we need to do something every day based on all the activities we've talked about and heard about. Seven days a day, Monday through Friday. So, that's what we're doing. But and just very briefly, one, I wanted to say happy Wally to all those celebrating uh, the city as well in our community, but I think they have really great job of including. I know in um, each of their newsletters this is past Friday, I guess it was called Free Press, that is on behalf of the district. And to mention that this often comes up as a conversation about days off and calendar and recognizing all. We can continue to strive to be as inclusive as we possibly can. And in each year, we look at the calendar for opportunities to recommend holidays, maybe include some of those in our community. So uh, it's certainly in our mind, and how we can do that and still manage the correct number of days. Um, the requirement by the state is um, it, um, it's a pretty big list, but an important one for us to make, and we'll continue to do that. And last but not least, just thank you to the principals of a really, really great report. Um, and uh, you know, to Peter and Paul, if you just as we reflect on all the incredible things that are happening in our schools. Um, it's really a special environment that is provided and a very special community, so thank you for that. Next up, gentlemen, we then is approval from a bid of a cooperative of purchase of paper. Does anybody have a chance to look at it and say any questions? Motion to approve the bid. Anybody say? Second by the bid. All those in favor? Next up is the approval of a settlement agreement, a release agreement, with all the Board of Education hereby authorizes to superintend the schools, the Board of Education president, to execute a settlement agreement in the amount of $1,750,000 to resolve a particular claim filed in the New York State final date of the day. I'll have a chance to read that. Motion to approve um, the settlement agreement. So moved by the name, moved by the name, seconded by Karen. All those in favor? Aye. Next on the agenda is the approval of the Interim Municipal Agreement to share food service for the previous phase. Um, 